right, so now that we have our storefront database created, the next thing we're gonna do is look at how to create tables for this database. So a table is what is used in a database to keep track of records uh, of a certain type. Um, for example, in our storefront app here, let's say we wanna keep track of all the products that we sell, um, and we wanna keep track of all the customers that we've sold to. So in that instance, what we wanna do is create separate tables, one table for all the customer records, you know, all the um, different uh, unique information across every uh, customer that we've sold to. And then we want to create a products table, uh, which would keep track of all the different unique attributes of all the products that we sell. So that's what we're going to look at now in this video is how to create tables and how to drop tables as well. So the first thing we need to do now that we've created this uh, database, our storefront database, we need to connect to it. So in Table Plus, we can do that by clicking the little pancake stack there. Uh, find our storefront database. We'll highlight it and then we'll click Open. So now we're here. Um, we can open back up our SQL editor uh, by clicking the little SQL icon in the toolbar. And now we don't want to create a database here, so we can go ahead and get rid of this. And now we can look at the SQL commands to write to create tables in this database. So to get started, let's just do a products table and let's do a simple one just so we can see the syntax here and what all is involved when we need to, uh, with what all is involved with creating tables. So the first thing we want to do is, uh, as we did with the databases, we want to use the create keyword. So we'll say create here. And then instead of databases in this case, we want to say table. And you see as you start typing table, um, table plus, uh, gives us the little drop down again and we can simply tab to complete that. So now this is where we want to provide a name for this table. So this table name I'm going to call products. So we can write that in lowercase like that. And then the next thing we want to do after this is we want to open a set of parentheses just like this. So I'll do some parentheses. Uh, I'm going to hit enter uh, twice just to give some space here and while I'm here I'm going to go ahead and put my terminating uh, semicolon at the end of the parenthesis here. If you notice, uh, table plus highlights those in red without that, uh, trying to help us, you know, or trying to help indicate to us that, hey, you forgot to terminate this uh, SQL statement here. Okay, so now I'm going to go up inside of here, and in the, the body of the statement here, this is where we want to define uh, the columns that this table is going to have, and those columns are represent the individual attributes that a product has. So for example, a product might have a name and it might have a product code, for example. Those could be our two uh, starting columns uh, to have in this table. So we would have a products table, right? And it would have two columns in it, one for the product name, so we would just say name, and then the other one would represent, uh, or would be called, uh, you know, product code, okay? So we need to, set that information up here in our create table statement. So let's do that now. Okay, so inside the parentheses here, I'm going to set up the column information for this table. So the first thing I wanna say is that the products table, it should have a name column. And then the next thing we need, we need to say is what type of data we plan to store in this column. So in this case, uh, this is just gonna be a string of characters and it could be, you know, any length of uh, characters, but maybe we want to cap it at a certain number, uh, you know, maybe 40, for example. So in that case, what we would say is that, so the type of data we're going to store in this column is going to be what's known as varchar. So what we can say is varchar, you can see it starts to pop up, and then we can open a set of parentheses, and inside the set of parentheses, we can type the number that we want to limit uh, this field to be able to hold. So we can type the name of any product in this field up to 40 characters, and that includes spaces. So that's how we'll set up the name column here. Uh, and then to add our next column, we simply put a comma here, and we can go to the next line, and we can say the next column that we want to have is uh, the product code. So we can say product code, okay? And then this, uh, maybe this one is a number, right, it's of some sort that corresponds to a certain product. So in that case, we can set this up to be an integer. And if you start to type integer, again, it'll pop up. We can tab complete, just like that. And now, let's just do these two columns for now. Unlike above, where we had to put the comma here, we don't need to put a comma at the end of this one. If we were going to add another column to this table, 
then we would put a column, a comma, and drop to the next line and write the next column information. Uh, but in this case, we don't need to do it. So here we have everything we need to create this products table. So let's go ahead and run this SQL statement. So we click run. We can see that the query was OK. And then uh, you can see that it logged out here the query that was done. And now over in uh, the top here in the toolbar, this little refresh icon, if we click that, we'll see over on the left here, this tables drop down has now populated to show that there's uh, a table called products inside the storefront um, database here. And if we click on it, you can see the information here. So it's got one column for name and it's got one column for product code. And if we had more, they would go across this way. And if we had information that we were storing in this table, it would be listed out here. So one row would be one individual product record. Um, so maybe the name is a toothbrush and the product code is 1397, right? That information would be stored in the appropriate column uh, in just one row, and that represents just the toothbrush. The next product, if it was a bar of soap, would be here, soap bar. And then the product code for that, you know, 456, that would be in the second row here. So with that done, let's hop back over to our uh, SQL editor here. And let's look at how to drop the products table. So similar to how we did uh, drop database, uh, you remember how we did drop database, right? Uh, we can do the same thing for the table. So we can get rid of all this and we can just simply say drop table. And then we want to drop the products table. So we'll type products and then end it with a semicolon. We do not need to additionally specify all of the column info that this uh, table has corresponding to it. Uh, that would be a lot. We'd have to, you know, reference things back and forth and type it all out by hand. That would be a lot. But thankfully, we can just simply say uh, drop products or uh, drop table products. And then we can run that command. And you can see that uh, drop table executed OK. It logged it out here. It still seems to show the products table here in the sidebar. But that's because uh, when you do this sort of stuff, you have to come over here and refresh. And now if you refresh, you see that that table is gone. So that products table no longer exists. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, recreate our table. And actually, I'm gonna take this moment uh, to present you with an exercise to try to rewrite the command uh, to show, or to create the products table now. So pause the video here, take a few minutes, try and uh, come up with that on your own. Um, you know, if you need to, you can go back and look uh, to get a little help, but I would definitely suggest you try even if you don't get it right, try to, you know, recall the information and, and recreate the table yourself and run it and uh, remember to refresh up here and see if you can get that table to show up again. So go ahead and do that now and then I will uh, redo it for you. All right. So uh, hopefully you were able to get that. And if not, that's OK. You know, it's, it's stuff, this is all new stuff we're learning here. And, you know, through repetition, it'll become more familiar and you, you'll you'll get it trust me so uh what we need to do is we want to say create and then we'll say table and then the name of the table that we're going to create is going to be products and then we'll open up a set of parentheses here we'll give ourselves some space and then inside uh the body of this statement here this is where we're going to define the columns that this table has so again we'll do a name column and that's going to be uh, a variable length character string. So if you remember that statement, that, that term there, that might help you remember what the data type you need to use is here. So varchar, variable you know, character string, var variable length char character string. Um, so we'll write that again. So varchar, and then that takes a number, and we'll do 40 again. So that will be you know, any string up to 40 characters long, what can uh, be the represent the name of a product. We'll put a comma here at the end. And then the next one uh, was the product code. So we'll say product code. OK, just like that. And then we want this to be an integer. There we go, just like that. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and run this. And we'll see the OK statement on that uh, SQL statement or a query that ran successfully. And now if we come up here and we refresh, we can see that that products table is back. If we click on it, we see our name and product code columns uh, back here in the table. So that's creating and dropping tables. 
uh, in the next video, we're going to look at how, to, how do we insert rows into this table for, uh, for products that we might be selling. So see you there.